All right, folks, what we got right here is a cooler full of crawfish. And um, let's take a look at them. There's all sizes in there, and there's a lot of them. Uh, I'm not going to be able to use all these today. The water's cold. The water temperature is probably, I'm going to say, around 48 degrees on the surface. We've had some cold weather. And we had an episode of some hard rain, and the water level's up. So these crawfish right here, I won't be able to catch any more um, this winter. So that's the reason why I'm doing some crawfish videos. I want to use them up before they die. But they'll live a long time. This is, this is nothing but wet newspaper. If you'll store them that way, if you catch you a big batch, newspaper works wonders just wet it but not soak it and in the winter time you can keep your crawfish for several weeks but right now they're in real good shape and i'm wanting to use them up so that's why we're doing some crawfish fishing all right let's go look at the water and i'll show you what type of equipment i'm going to use today which is not going to be very much to it just a simple way to fish, very effective. That This river is raging out of control right here. I'll tell you what, it's high and it's muddy. But I like this right here, I'll tell you why. This area right back here, folks, uh, anytime the water conditions gets like this in the wintertime, bass will filter in to that spot right here where that's one of the spots very very easy to access from the bank and um, I have in the past caught some big bass in here and the reason why I think they funnel in here is for a, for two reasons one reason is because we have a retaining wall right here down the length of this trough and we also have rocks in front of it. Now this water, <clears throat> in the, the trough, right in the middle of the trough is around 14 to 15 foot deep. It's real deep. And I believe it traps a lot of heat and a lot of bait fish are filtering in right here in the bass of follow. It's real simple. When the water level goes down, well, it changes. The fish ain't in there so thick. But there's usually always a few bass in here. Um, I have a lot of different spots that I can fish from the bank uh, under these kind of conditions. But this one's unique. The reason is is because I've caught smallmouth, largemouth, and spots all in the same day fishing right through here. I'm using the same things I used before. Same reel, same rod, and it's a cadence CR7, six foot three, medium light, extra fast tilt, real light outfit, folks. And I'm using a cadence reel, so it's nothing more than just a crappie outfit. It's the CS10 is the number on it. Anyhow, I have it loaded with 10 pound test braid, Power Pro braid, and just a small hook right here. This is a size one Gamakatsu hook, and that's it. No weight or anything. That's how I fish live crawfish. Now, what I'm going to do is make a cast as close to this wall as I can let that crawfish sink down and it's going to be and this average depth is around 14 feet right here at the wall and then it stays that way pretty consistent to about the middle then it starts inclining up towards me and that's all they are to it it's just a trough where fish are funneling in now i'm going to hook this crawfish up with a rubber band like i usually do it's about three quarters of an inch in diameter uh, I got these at Walmart. 
So let's lay her crawl down. I'm gonna take it, twist it one time like that. And then we're gonna slip this rubber band over his pinchers. He's a little bit cold right now, but they'll warm up because it's supposed to get up to around 50 today and snap it on just like that. Then I'm gonna take our hook right here and slip it right up under that rubber band. I'm not hooking the crawfish in any way. And I always take that hook and I face it towards the tail like that. Very effective. Okay, now I tied this hook straight to braid. Usually I use a fluorocarbon leader. Uh, I'll either use a small swivel or I'll use a, a double uni knot uh, to, to fasten my fluorocarbon to my braid. It's cold this morning again. I don't talk real good when it's cold, but being the water is kind of stained i think straight to the braid is going to be good enough let's make a cast i got within about six foot from the wall i'm just going to let it just fall down real slow now if these crawfish was real active hit almost almost be to the bottom right now even in 14 foot of water they'll flip their tail a couple times and boom they're on the bottom but he's going to sink because he's not in good shape right now. He's cold. So I'm going to let it go to the bottom. Once I make bottom contact, I'm going to barely move that crawfish just like you, like you would a, a Carolina rig or a plastic worm back to me. I'll move it a few inches and I'll let him sit. And it won't be long. We're going to have a pickup. I guarantee you. There's some bass in here right now. See? Y'all see that line? Now I'm going to let him have it a while. Because for one thing, there's a lot of small fish in here. And they could be some big fish in here, but I'm going to let him have it a while so he can turn that crawfish tail first. I believe he's had it long enough. Let's see what we got here. There he is. <clears throat> Finally caught up to him. This is a pretty good one. Pretty good fish right here. Look at there. Nice little spotted bass right off the bat. Okay. I'm in some fishing line right here. <laughs> I didn't see that. I'm going to jerk that stuff out there. Look at there, folks. No, oh, me. Come here, spot. Yep, I got to get that out of there. Oh, ain't nothing no more aggravating than that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But we got him in a good place right there, right in the mouth. That ain't nothing but a picture of health right there. And I tell you what we're going to do, we're going to release him. <laughs> Golly, what a healthy little fish. Okay, let you go. Man, that's a fat fish. All right, folks. I'm using the same crawfish right here. He wasn't damaged. What I look for right here if he's been crushed in any way. And he hasn't. That crawfish should catch another one. Let's make another cast. I'm about in the same place as I was before. There's, hey, 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 hey. I was fixing to say there's a fish folks man they're hitting light today that's a pretty good one right there spotted bass look at there look at there look at there now 
that's a chunk that is a chunk he's a lot bigger than I thought he was this cold water they just can't we're gonna have to get over here to land him quit you're done you're done I didn't think he was that big man he's big to be as short as he is he is a big one look at there I can't say it I, I can't look how fat and broad that fish is look what a belly folks that is a good bass right there my goodness beautiful spotted bass I can't get over that how fat they are this year look how broad that doggone it I want y'all to go fishing when you can because it's good for you he didn't feel that big when I set the hook but this cold water go on back boy that fish right there was close to three pounds he didn't look it as far as length but now that was a girthy fish let's catch another one Whoa. Folks, I normally don't tell folks how I feel, but right now, I am super duper -de stoked, and I am jacked like a jackrabbit fixing to jump out of a bar patch. I am totally stoked, and what was that other word? jacked now i'm jacked i'll tell y'all the reason i'm super stomped up this is a big crawfish and i've i've been bit and i'm fixing to stoke him up <clears throat> i think this is a lot better fish right here folks this, this is the reason I get so stomped up, or stoked up, excuse me. Yeah, this is a lot better fish right here. This is a good spot here. Spotted fish, or it's the best one of the day. Looky here. And that was on a super duper big crawfish. Doggone it, he's gonna get away, that crawfish is. Sure is. I could have caught another stump right there with him. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna show y'all what a look at there what a spot. That is a good one. That's the one that I was gonna be super stoked up about and jacked up. <sighs> That's what I'm talking about. Doggone it. That crawfish is still laying right there. That's the biggest crawfish that I got. Take a look at him. Can y'all see him right there? He's still... I might try to catch him with my hand if he'll come on up here a little bit more. Oh, my goodness. I cannot tell y'all how fun that was. Let's let him go. Mule. Catch that crawfish. I'm going to try to. If I can, I'll put him back on here. Dead. Let me see if I can get down here with him. Don't you look. I got him. Uh -huh. I'll use him again. Look at there, they, let's catch another. All right, folks, I'm gonna have to retie my knot right here. This is 10 pound test Power Pro. Now, Power Pro recommends that you use a trilene knot. And I tell you, I have for years and I've never had the knot slip out. Here's a trilene knot. I just run it through the eyelet, through it again. Now on braid, I go around about four times. Take your tag in, go around about four times. That's two, three, four. 
and then back through the two loops that you formed and cinch it up. Now the reason I retied this is because if I do hook a really big fish, I won't get broke. Let's catch another. Yeah. Well, got us a large mouth right here. The first large mouth. Got another front blowing in, folks. Doggone, that's a pretty good fish right there, really. Man. Come here, you pretty thing. Large jaw. First one, too. That's why I moved on down here to see if I could catch a largemouth. Chunky. Chunky little fish. Yeah, this doggone wind is really coming on right now. Yeah, we got another front. It's that time of the year here in North Alabama where we have one front after the next, so... Mercer's getting a lot of wrinkles on or, uh, right there behind his neck, on the back side of his neck. Hey, man, what kind of a fish did you catch over? I seen you catch one. I know you did. What kind was it? Can I come over and fish with you over? Well, folks, I'm going to let it go here on the Tennessee River. Now, I'm telling you, I'm starving to death. I'm going to go home and eat a tater. Uh, today was a lot of fun, uh, a little more than what I expected. But I tell you, you never know when you go fishing, and that's a fact. I want to thank you all for sharing a few minutes with me and enjoying the day as much as I did. But, yeah. Light is right if you want to have a good fight. Keep it simple. Keep your fishing simple. And you'll probably catch more fish. But hey. And remember, go fishing when you can because it's good for you.